Hey there guys and welcome once again to the PCBSD YouTube channel. My name is Josh and today I'm going to be bringing you the second part to the Steam on PCBSD series. What I did this time, what I want to show you today is I set up an old Windows box I had laying around. I went and I put it over in a corner, I popped a really nice video card in it, and I wanted to see if I could set that up as a streaming server to stream inside PCBSD. Um, messing around with wine all this, uh, all the past few days, I kind of by accident saw that oh it's actually connecting to my win my wife's windows computer in the other room I wonder if I just set up a system and stream it in here if, if it'd be able to handle it so that's what kind of inspired me and uh, got me to this point so um, anyways the first thing I did um, and the first thing you guys are gonna have to do to get steam set up is you need to watch the first video if you haven't already go ahead and, and uh, open that video in another browser or just just browse over to it and make sure you get steam set up you need to apply the DWrite fix and go ahead and apply the NVIDIA wine fix just in case. I'm not sure you're going to actually need it with this method. But, um, you know, that's probably a good idea. Just go ahead and set it up just like in the first video. Okay, great. Um, second thing, after you've done that, you need to go ahead and we are going to open. Let's go up here. And I'm going to go over to a new tab here. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to edit our PF firewall. Pretty much anyone on PCBSD is going to be using the PF firewall. And uh, this is something you definitely need to need to do. We're going to allow the steam traffic through. So we're going to type sudo uh, slash, whoops, slash etsy slash pf dot conf. All right, we're going to type in our password. Whoops, what just happened here? Oh sudo edit slash etsy slash pf dot conf nobody saw that nobody saw that there alright rookie mistake here we go so anyways here we go alright we are in the pf firewall configuration you're gonna see these last four lines from here down these are all to do with the steam traffic I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the video description if you guys just wanna copy and paste those into your pf.conf you're welcome to do that and that should uh, allow all the steam traffic so this was kind of a pain to figure out but once it was figured out once you have it set the first time you never have to mess with it again so just paste those in there and hopefully that will help you out and uh, won't be too much of a headache alright let's go ahead and leave save the file if you haven't already and then run sudo slash etsy slash rc dot d slash pf restart that's going to restart the firewall for us very good now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to probably check and see if your router supports the prioritization of packets it's called different things on different different routers but uh, I call it packet prioritization so go into your routers config see if it has something like that and set any steam traffic um, to get the highest priority. I have kids in my house that are constantly watching Netflix cartoons and things like that so uh, it was definitely slowing my connection down before. This has definitely uh, helped me out a lot. Um, the second thing, let's see here. Well actually let's just go ahead and start Steam. I'm going to show you guys and then I'm going to kind of discuss some of the pitfalls I ran into. I think I can just minimize this for now. Being that we're using a Windows server, it's Windows 7, um, but being that we're using a headless Windows system as our server, we are going to run into some unfortunate Windows errors that uh, <laughs> are kind of native to Steam streaming. But I'm going to show you guys how I was able to work around those and just kind of fill you guys in on some of the pitfalls so you guys can just avoid those, all right? Just going to go ahead and start up a game here, show you guys. Let's see here. How about Star Trek? Star Trek, when I installed this um, right here on my system, Let's go ahead and switch it over to stream. When I installed it here on my system natively, it wouldn't it, it would run, but all I was getting was a black screen. I could hear the audio, couldn't see anything. Well, you can see now streaming from this Windows game server. I have video, I have audio. So that is pretty cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and load into the game here real quick. Let you guys see a few seconds of that working. I was really impressed with the quality 
I didn't really know what to expect. Thought maybe I'd get choppy video, choppy internet quality, but really no, it's it's really good. Let's go ahead and click continue. That way we don't have to watch the long cutscene. All right. Check it out, it looks pretty nice. What's going on down there? The radiation from those binary stars is making communications difficult. But the station appears to be in some sort of distress. Hmm. Check off readings. They're operating on emergency power and are struggling to maintain altitude. Cause? Unknown, sir. Captain, they have issued a request for immediate evacuation. And let's help them out. Mr. Scott, prepare transporters. I wouldn't recommend it, sir. Alright, let's go ahead and quit out of this game. Just wanted to kind of show you guys. And you know what, being a, a huge Star Trek fan, I had to give a nod to uh, to this game. It's actually a really good game. I was really psyched when I saw that it was working now through this method, so. Alright, let's go ahead and quit out. So some of the problems I ran into, um, that you guys might run into, Windows 8. Um, yeah, everyone hates Windows 8. And you know what? I don't know what I was thinking. I have a uh, laptop that we use for some UEFI development, and it has a Windows 8 partition. And I said to myself, hey, why don't I use that? It's got a pretty good video card in here. You know, why not, why not just use this system? Bad idea. Um, okay, Windows 8 sucks. It's documented all over the internet that using it as a streaming server is terrible. I don't know what they they did, but it, it's it's god awful. Avoid it at all costs. If you have Windows XP or Windows 7, Windows 7 is definitely the preferred if you're running a game uh, server. So try to check that out. I think I even saw Windows XP isn't officially supported. Um, there have been people out there that get it to work. So if that's all you have, you might try that, but uh, I know Windows 7 is definitely recommended. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and just fire up Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. And do not use the AMD mantle. Um, I tried to start that since the remote system is AMD, but for some reason it's messing up every everything with the streaming. It did crash my uh, wine instance. So just use the regular method. No big deal. I'm not really even sure it would have improved things uh, very much for me. Alright. We'll go ahead and press escape. We'll have to give it a little bit of time here to load, but while that's loading, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about a couple of the pitfalls I ran into using a Windows uh, streaming server. The first thing was no audio. When I would start a game in Wine on PCBSD, the game would run, I'd get video, all that would come through fine, but absolutely no audio. So my first inclination was that it was something wrong with PCBSD's configuration or wine. That wasn't the case at all, actually. I went over to the headless system, I plugged in a set of headphones into the speaker jack, and you wouldn't believe it, I restart the game and it starts working just fine. So keep that in mind, there's some silly little issues like that. Another thing kind of similar to that issue was the keyboard and mouse would not work on the client computer on PCBSD. So the game would load up, and I might have mouse, but I couldn't use the keyboard. Or vice versa, I might have keyboard, but I couldn't use the mouse. The way I solved that was just to simply plug in a keyboard and a mouse onto the uh, streaming server, and it fixed it no problem. Once I restarted the game, I had mouse, I had keyboard, no issues at all. All right, so let's just look around here. So we did that. How about Tomb Raider? Tomb Raider didn't really want to work before. If your audio is garbled or bad, the first thing you probably need to consider is you need to check and make sure that you're running on a direct wired connection. Wi-Fi technically will work, but it's not, it's not the best. You're going to get a lot more issues. So if you want the best, most stable connection, just make sure your headless server uh, game server is plugged in directly to your router. And we'll just hit this. Yes, let's just say yes. Alright, give it 
it just a few more seconds, and there we go. Check that out. Pretty good stuff though, right? So we're just going to go ahead and quit out now. Let me see if there's anything else on my list here I needed to tell you guys about. There was one more thing. Uh, it's very important. If you're running into an issue, um, even after you've done all these other workarounds, where you can't use your keyboard or your mouse, or one of uh, a variant of the both, maybe you can use your mouse, can't use your keyboard, um, and you did the other workaround by plugging in a keyboard and a mouse on the server, make sure that you're starting Steam with elevated permissions on the server computer. Okay, so basically run as administrator in Windows. Start your uh, Steam client like that, and you should be able to do away with those issues. I think I hit about every pitfall that Windows has to offer when you're using it as a game server. So hopefully this will be helpful to you guys if you want to try to set it up via this method. I haven't ran into a single game um, that doesn't work with this method, so that is really cool. Um, if you guys want to test it out, maybe use a... a uh, different version of Windows, see if you can get it working that way. Let us know in the comments below if you were able to get that working. One thing I did want to mention, we had several people, um, We uh, after we released the first video, several people said, well, why, you know, that's why you should just use Linux. Who wants to use Wine anyways? But the thing is, I, even if we had Linux um, native support in PCBSD for Steam, we still wouldn't be able to play a lot of our games. I'd kind of I'd probably end up doing it this way anyways because I have a very large library and there's a lot of games that that won't work natively on Linux that I want to play. So just just kind of something to think about food for thought, you know. Um that would be nice to have and we're thinking very soon probably in PCBSD 11 um coming out next year that we will have native support. Um that is still very far away. There's a lot that needs to happen, but uh that is kind of our goal, uh, what we're shooting for. So Keep that in mind, even with that support, you know, we, we still not may not be able to play all of our games. So, at any rate, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it so much. Have a great day.